Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using data validation in Excel to facilitate the correct entry of research data. In counseling research, when we collect data, we want to make sure they are correctly entered into Excel. And the data validation feature can help us to set criteria that entries have to meet in order to be added to the data set. So this Excel worksheet is configured for a fictitious study. You can see you have an ID number for your first variable, program type, this would be an independent variable, post-test, a dependent variable, and participation. This would be comments about the participation level in groups that was observed by the group facilitators as the study was going on. So for ID, this would just be an ID number. For program, this would be the group that the participant was assigned to. And you can see I've already added over here to the right, there's a CBT group, a Gestalt group, and then treatment as usual, which would be group therapy, but it would be the group therapy that was already being used at the facility. Then we have the dependent variable post-test. Let's assume this particular group was designed to lower symptoms of depression. So this would be a score from a depression inventory. And then we have participation. And of course, this is more subjective. This would be comments. And it could be a phrase, a sentence, or maybe a couple sentences. And we want to be able to configure data validation in a way to facilitate the entry of values for these three variables, for program, post-test, and participation. So let's start with program. I'm going to select cells 2 all the way through 17 in column B. And then you can see I'm on the home ribbon here. I'm going to move to data and then data validation. And here you see the data validation dialog and right now it'll allow any value. In this drop down list we can see there are many options available. Whole number, decimal, list, date, time, text length, as well as custom. For this case, I'm going to use list. And then the source is going to be cells G1 through G3. That contains the levels of the independent variable. By default, you can see it will ignore blanks. And in cell dropdown is the default for list. I'm going to leave those both checked off. The next tab has an input message that's available when the user selects the cell and it allows you a title and an input message. So in this case, for title, I'm just going to enter in IV for independent variable. And then for input message, I'm going to enter the word group. And of course, you could be more specific uh, for this section if you wanted to be, or you could just not select this. You don't have to have an input message when the cell is selected. You just uncheck this box. But I'm going to leave it with independent variables, a title, and input messages group, and then move to error alert. And you can see by default it's set to stop. And of course the show error alert after invalid data is entered is checked off. There are two other styles. There's warning and information. And I'll get to those in a few moments. Let's leave this one as a stop style. And this means that the user will get a message if they don't select one of the groups. And they will not be able to enter in data that doesn't match one of those groups. So here for title, I'm just going to use the word error. And then for the error message, please select a group. And then click OK. And now you can see it has independent variable in bold and then group below that. So that's the title and the input message. I can go to any cell in this range and I'm going to get that same message. There's a drop down arrow here and you can see I can select CBT group, Gestalt group, or treatment as usual, and that matches the list here. 
You can also store this list in another worksheet, which is probably a better idea in most situations because you may add variables and then have to move it anyway. So if I go to B2, I'll select CBT group, for B3, the Gestalt group, and for B4, the treatment as usual. So now let's see what happens if I attempt to enter data in other than one of these three options. So instead of choosing one of these three or typing one of these three in, let's just say I put in group one, which isn't one of the approved levels of the independent variable. You can see this message box comes up and it has error, which was the title I specified, the stop style, and it says, please select a group. I only have three choices here, retry, cancel, or help. There's no way to override this and put group one in anyway. Unless, of course, I erase the criteria from the data validation dialog. So I'm gonna select retry and delete what I have in there now and select CBT group and you can see that it does not throw an error. I could also type this in as long as it matches so I could put in CBT group and enter. It's on the list so it can be typed in of course it's much quicker in most circumstances depending on what you have in the list to simply select it. So now let's take a look at post-test. This will be a numeric value. So I'm going to select, again, cells 2 through 17 and go to Data Validation. Move to the Settings tab. And we'll assume that the instrument used for this post-test is based on a T-score. The output would be a T-score. And that's a standard score with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So when we look at the validation criteria, we'll choose whole number, and let's set the minimum to be three standard deviations below the mean, and the maximum to be three standard deviations above the mean. So it'd be 20 for the minimum, and 80 for the maximum. Now, of course, it is possible to have a legitimate score outside this range. It would be unusual, but it would be possible. So we go to input message. For the title, I'll put score. And then for the input message, I'll enter usually between 20 and 80. And then for the error alert in this case, because there can be a valid score lower than 20 or greater than 80, I'm going to use the warning style. And the title will just be unusual score. And the error message will read make sure T score is entered. So again, we're allowing here for a value outside of the 20 through 80 that we would expect. So click OK. You can see selecting on one of these cells. We have the title score in bold and then usually between 20 and 80. So we have a reminder here of what the researcher should be entering. So if I enter in a 20, I'm okay, an 80, okay. Of course, anything in the middle, like the mean 50, okay. But what happens now if I enter in a value of, say, 18? This dialog comes up, this message box, with the warning symbol. It reads unusual score, that's what I typed in for title, and make sure t-score is entered. That may be the t-score, so let's assume that it is. So for my options, I'm going to choose yes. When it says here continue with a question mark, I'm going to select yes. So it will enter in that 18. Now let's say I go to enter in 18, but I intended to type 28. So I'll put in here 18. the same warning comes up and this time this is not the intended score and I realize that because of this warning make sure t-score is entered continue in this case I'm going to click no 
and it's going to highlight that value and I can put in the intended value which was 28 and of course that's acceptable. And now for the last example which is participation. So this is meant to be a variable that holds comments and these are subjective comments that may or may not be used as part of the study but it's data that you want to collect. So we know at a minimum the comment will be a few words or a phrase and potentially up to several sentences. So I'm going to highlight D2 through D17, select that range, and then go to Date Validation. Under Settings here, I have a few choices, but I'm going to go with Text Length as a way of trying to facilitate the correct data entry for this variable. And because this variable is intended to accept comments, I'm going to say text length data greater than, and then specify a minimum. So given that we're looking for a minimum of a phrase, certainly if we have a text length of, say, 5, specified here as the minimum, that would likely catch a comment that did not meet what we had intended for this variable. So enter in a 5. So now it's going to be only allowing a text length that's greater than 5 here. Moving over to input message. For this one I'm not going to use the title, just an input message. I'm just going to put comments. And then move over to the error alert. And here of course we could use the warning just as we did for post-test, but I'm going to use the information to demonstrate this feature. And the title will be short entry and the error message will read please add a comment. So again here recognizing that there could be a legitimate comment that has a text length that is five characters or less but we know that would be unusual so we're putting up this information warning when that happens. So I'll click OK. Again you can see comments comes up so let's say the first comment here is highly engaged. So this is a participant that was highly engaged in the treatment. And we want to record that with this comment. This is certainly more than five characters long. So we hit enter. The dialog does not come up. Let's assume for this next comment, the researcher or the individual entering the data misunderstands what information is intended and enters in the word three. We see this is exactly five characters and because it's not greater than five characters this dialog comes up short entry please add a comment and notice the only three choices here are OK, cancel, and help. So if we click OK it does advance and allows that entry. If I were to enter in another short comment let's say two, it's three characters long. And now this time instead of hitting OK, I hit Cancel. It's going to clear out that cell and I can put in another entry. I hope you found this video on using data validation in Excel to facilitate the correct entry of research data to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.